Hello everyone, welcome back to Advent of the Code 2020. We're going to be doing day 13 today. If you are keeping up with, I'm sorry, day 12, <clears throat> they tricked me. Um, if you are keeping up with my videos, you'll notice that this is just shortly after I did the last one. I'm going to try and do them all in one sitting, who knows, maybe I'll need a, need a break if today's a long one. But yesterday's wasn't too bad. And I noticed this is, the, I think, the first time in Advent of Code history that it's ever not been a linear uh, advent calendar. I mean, this year is the first time it hasn't just been um, like that th there have been any gaps as well. Um, but uh, this is the first time it's been like, oh, you got to skip this and then go back, apparently. <clears throat> anyway, we'll see what happens on day 13 that makes us turn around. Or maybe it'll happen on day 12 and when we then we turn around and do day 13. We'll see. Day 12, Rain Risk. Your ferry made descent, decent progress toward the island, but the storm came in faster than anyone expected. The ferry needs to take evasive actions. Unfortunately, the ship's navigation computer seems to be malfunctioning. Rather than giving a route directly to safety, it produced extremely circuitous instructions. When the captain uses the PA system to ask if anyone can help, you quickly volunteer. The navigation instructions consist of a series sequence of single-character actions paired with integer input values. You work out what they probably mean. Oh, I assume we're going to be wrong somehow. Um, okay, north. Oh, left, right, and forward. How exciting. Starts facing east. Only left and right change the direction the ship is facing. If the ship is facing east and the next instruction is north 10, the ship would move north 10 but still be facing east. Interesting. All right. Yes, I understand. And at the end, we want to find out how far we went from where we started. Okay. Straightforward enough, right? Um, we might want to play it to do today. Who knows? Um, so let's define a little data step. There's a step of direction and an int. And we have a data direction equals north, east, south, west or forward or left or right. Is that, is that correct? Did I get them all? North, south, east, west, left, right, forward. Okay, cool. Um, and we probably want somewhere a data um, ship, which is a ship of a few things. First, uh, a coordinate and a... Oh, actually, this was not the right way to find direction. Absolute compass or relative, relative, let's say. Data compass equals this. Data relative equals this. <clears throat> And now our ship needs both a coordinate and a compass direction in which it is currently facing. Mm, we need a uh, type chord equals a pair of hints. Okay. And this seems like about all the data types we'll need today, probably, for part one anyway. I was just thinking about part, about yesterday's puzzle suddenly because I was I was thinking okay we'll probably use scanl to describe all of the places that we visit with the ship because there was a previous year where we did something like that and we cared about like when it crosses with itself it, like maybe part 2 will do that but actually and, and I was thinking we would use scanl yesterday but we ended up just needing iterate and I think today we also won't need scan L. We'll just need like fold L because we want to know like where we ended up. Anyway, um, so the the input I guess will be a list of direction, and we want we're going to need a function called um, follow. The function from direction to Uh, well, 
what order do I want these in? Obviously, it's like a, a, you know, th these are the arguments that it takes, right? Um, does the order matter much? Would I ever partially apply it? Probably not. I'm just passing it to reduce, well, to fold. Sorry, this is Haskell, not closure. Fold L. And I always forget what order fold L takes its arguments in. I guess it takes the accumulator on the left, and that's our ship, so we probably want to write it uh, in this way. Follow um, S of absolute. D, um, hmm. See, I don't know. We need a function here that's um two delta is a function from compass to chord, and we just implement two delta equals lambda case, there you go, um, of north to, I think the coordinate system that we use is arbitrary, so I'll have up be negative in the first direct, I'll, I'll do row major with up being negative. Well, no, let's not do that. Let's do x, y coordinates, um, since we're kind of representing an object traveling on a grid and not like a drawing on a screen or something. Um, so north is 0, 1, south is 0, minus 1, west is minus 1, 0, east is uh, 1, 0. And now we need also um, Turn is a function from relative to relative and compass to compass turn. Ugh, this is the worst. Turn F. C equals C. Probably this should never happen. Oh yeah, it'll happen. Sure, why not? Because we're going to be saying, we're going to say something like, you know, go left by five or go forward by five. And in either case, I'll say, okay, turn by that amount and then go go forward in it. it will be the idea. Um, turn of... Um, L equals no it equals case c of we were facing north we want to go west facing west we want to go south facing south we want to go east we're facing east we want to go north um, and turn of r c equals now we could just write out another case but i don't want to do that it's kind of lame and i could i could type something wrong right um, what I should instead do is turn L well let's just say L L L C where L equal turn L there you go so in this way we've kind of and baked in the knowledge that turning uh, right is the same as turning left three times. And therefore not had to type this nonsense out three times. We just have only, only one place in our program where we describe how compass positions are related to each other. It's kind of nice. Because you never know, there might be a fifth compass direction someday, and uh, it would be nice to only have to update one thing, right? <laughs> That's sort of the, uh, the idea anyway. Um, so follow s of an absolute c equals, oh, we don't just want a direction, do we? Yeah, we do. Oh, we need 
Okay, this is actually a turn. And if we want a direction to be a turn, sorry, a direction of a turn and an int. And our input should be a list, right, of directions. Um, Absolute D N. Wait, is that right? Okay, I guess what I want actually is um, direction of T and N equals case T of absolute. Um, C for compass, I don't know, something, um, relative R also something. Does that look right? Um, it seems okay. I guess in this case we can say it's a ship of our old, hang on, a ship takes, I'm going to change the order then ship, compass and a coordinate, ship of C, we're not changing the coordinate, and move and see is the idea and here i will say um oh this is i need to destructure the ship as well ship uh der pause we'll call it a heading oh how exciting um Move N C of pause, uh, but instead of C, it should be heading, our old heading. And now we will say it is a ship. Oh, right. In this case, we need to change our heading. Um, move N heading pause where heading equals turn heading R these are backwards turn R heading okay and now it's just mad that I don't have move yet uh, excuse me it should be a lowercase turn What's wrong with this? Oh, this was supposed to be uppercase. Got it. I capitalized turn instead of capitalizing L. All right. Um, and we could make move be private to follow, but I don't see any reason to. It's a useful domain concept. So move the function from chord, no, int, Board. Mm. Int compass chord chord. Yeah, we already have two delta, so that's fine. Move n d pause equals um, x y equals um, let dx dy 
equal to delta of d in x plus dx. Ah, the time dx times d n y plus dy times n. Right, that seems good. This all seems fine. Um, now we do need to parse something. And uh, it's honestly so simple that I don't think we need text reg explicative to parse this input. It's just a single character and then the digits of a number, right? So I will say map parse lines where parse of c um, n equals um, where you're calling these directions, right? Direction d lead n, um, where d equals case c of and now we have to write out all the characters we care about, which is kind of lame, but there you have it. Um, n, n, s, s. You could you could write this as like um, using generic or something. Oh, hang on. I have to actually wrap these in absolute, don't I? Yeah. Kind of lame, but okay. Uh, f relative f uh, r relative r and l relative l. So let's test this real quick. What are you mad about parse? Oh yeah, parse is it non exhaustive and yeah, this whole thing is not exhaustive. Um, with when we were using text reg x applicative, we actually were non exhaustive because we handled maybes. But here I'm just like cheating and using basic string handling functions. So let's say we um, parse five, no, L5, I don't know. Oh, it's hidden. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Uh, prepare of the list L5 and N10. You're right, it does the line splitting itself. It actually wants a new line separated single string. Okay, it, well, hmm. I actually don't know if it succeeded because it has no show instance and therefore it might just be lazily telling me, yes, this is an input. And I can tell that without having to read anything because um, map always returns a list and parse always returns a direction but i can't tell you what that that thing is um so what i guess we could do is just say um length of this two well again it could have figured that out without ugh. could have figured that out even if we were totally broken i feel like um so let's i don't know Kind of seems dumb, but where is step being used? Nowhere. Oh, I put that in direction. No. Why do these both have ints? I'm not using step at all. Maybe it would be better to call direction instruction. That way you don't get confused with compass directions. Turn is such a weird, an absolute turn. 
Like, it almost makes sense to call this a direction, right? Oh, whoops. I did a replace all, but starting at the current cursor position, so lines above are unaffected. But now I have instruction and direction in the same, like, and those are such similar names. Direction shouldn't mean two things, is my personal opinion. If I could submit that as a feature request to the English language, please. Um, like, I don't even know. Oh, we could call a direction a heading? I think that's probably like technically incorrect, like a, a, a nautically inclined person would tell me that I'm using it wrong. <clears throat> Headings are absolute, I think. <clears throat> but now it sort of makes more sense and I don't have the word direction in here at all, which is great because it's a very confusing word. And indeed, it says go left five and go north ten. Perfect. So that all worked. Now, I think we're ready to write part one. Part one of... Uh, it's going to be a little tricky to write point free, so let's not. Part one of uh, insters equals um, let final equal fold L in data list uh, follow instars actually I think I can do fine with this um, it's just a uh, Manhattan composed with old L follow of ship what's the initial heading east Ship east zero zero. This is an int. Um, Manhattan takes a This is going to be mad now that I'm shadowing heading, I think. Um, so Manhattan is a function from chord to int. Manhattan of x, y is just uh, abs x plus abs y. We called it E. All right, that compiles. It should be mad, yeah, like I said, here it's mad that I'm reusing H, uh, heading rather. <clears throat> I don't know, I guess I might as well just call it um, heading head. No, head, let's call it H. There you go. Fine. Stack run? Come on, hit me with a working program. Fifty-nine oh five. It's a number. I'll take it. Um, just make sure I got everything right here. Absolute distance. Distance between wherever it started. Okay. Not the right answer, too high. Okay, fair enough. So, I didn't actually read the instructions about how you're supposed to handle turning. Turn left the given number of degrees? Oh my god. What? 
Oh, would they just give you 90? Okay. Let's let's look at our input, I guess. I assumed that it meant turn left and then move, but I should have read. All right. Um, let's look look at our input here. They're always 90 and 270 and so on. Okay. Um, okay. So I need to fix this. Um, that explains why it was too high. I was interpreting 270. It's like, just move 270 tiles. All right. So those don't move you at all. That's why the teachers always told you in school to read all the instructions before filling out the answer. Um, I mean, the good news is I can still like leave, use these same data types, I think. I just have to adjust. Follow? Yeah. Um, and we use just our old position. Uh, actually, relative F should be this. And then relative of any thing else is ship of h prime pause now we're going to have oh not Right here, we care about our heading. Here, we are moving according to the compass position. Got it. Um, so our turn should be a number divisible by 90. Um, So let's iterate. Wait, hang on. What's our turn look like? What's our relative? Oh, it's just F, L, or R. Yeah, OK. Um, let's uh, iterate turn. Oh, am I shadowing turn? I am. OK, that's why we called this R before. Turn R. Ma mm, div ninety. No, this is crazy. R is a relative thing. Um, we're, R is just our direction, so we're just gonna iterate turning R. That makes sense. Um, and we're starting with eight. That also makes sense. But what I want to do is look up in this list. Um, the number at n div 90. There we go. So to if you if you get like an r two seventy or whatever, you'll say okay. That means we should make three right turns. Okay, that seems fine. Hopefully a much smaller number here. Well, somewhat smaller. That's the right answer. Okay. Haskell can't save you from reading this back wrong.
Before you can give the destination to the captain, you realize the actual action messages were printed on the back of the instructions the whole time, or actual meanings. Almost all the actions indicate how to move a waypoint, which is relative to the ship's position. Rotate the waypoint around the ship by that amount. Okay. <laughs> this is such a dumb instruction set. Okay. Um, the waypoint starts, okay, and we're supposed to find out what the waypoint is. Got it. Move the waypoint to move forward to the waypoint. What does that mean? If the ship moves, the waypoint moves with it. I see. So F10 moves the ship to the waypoint 10 times. And it starts 10 units east and one unit north relative to the ship. Oh, I see. Not move 10 steps towards the waypoint, but treat the waypoint as a delta and apply that delta n times. Okay. Got it. And the, the movements... Moves it north three units, so it's now 10 east and four north. Got it. R90 rotates the waypoint around the ship clockwise. Got it. Okay. And then after all of this, we're we're asking still where the ship is, um, not where the waypoint is at the end, because we do occasionally move towards. These are the only instructions that move us towards move the ship at all. Action F. I wish they used the word ship here at some point. Move the ship towards the waypoint. But okay, it's understandable enough. So. How much do we need to change here? Um, we need Manhattan still, clearly, and position. Um, and we have the same ship. The funny thing is, the ship's heading doesn't matter anymore. Is that is that correct? So in part one, it says the ship starts out facing east. We don't actually care anymore. Hmm, okay. Um, so we, we could just like take this exact same thing and give it a new follow function. And I think that's what we will do. But the problem is we don't, we need a new ship as well, which I guess is fine. Um, data. Hmm. <laughs> we can just name it part two for lack of because this has to hold the ship and the waypoint, right? Um we call it a traveler. Um Um Oh sadly we won't be able to reuse position. That's fine. Um it takes a ship and a waypoint, which are both 
towards and the waypoint is relative to the ship i will i will be perfectly happy to understand that um why are you upset about this oh it needs uh curlies not rounds okay um and we can reuse several of these things i think if if the waypoint is at let's say five north and three east and i rotate that right is that the same as rotating north right and east right yeah huh So maybe I don't want to represent the waypoint as a coordinate, actually. Maybe I want to represent it as a a pair of compass plus int. It makes the rotation simpler. Huh. I'm not totally sure why that seems smart to me. Like, just... I guess basically it's because otherwise I have to once again encode, like, these rules. Um... But for handling pairs, in a sense, right? Because I'll have to implement turning around a position, which makes like I don't know, it kind of sucks. It'll, I'll be like, okay, if you're to the, if your x is to the east, if your x is positive, then make your y be negative in the result and copy that over. Whereas if I have the waypoint be actually tracking like east five, north two, I can leave the five and two alone and just turn each of the two directions themselves. So I kind of like that idea. Let me make a little change here. Um, I'm gonna replace chord with chord of int. And here I'm gonna say chord of a is a pair of a's. Um, and our waypoint is no longer a chord of int, but a chord of pair of compass and int. There's a lot of redundant brackets, it's true. I maybe was a little too zealous when I put them in. In fact, I, if I thought about it, I would realize you probably don't need them in any cases. Yeah. Okay. Now, this isn't exactly ideal in one sense, which is that in our waypoint, it is now possible to represent illegal, it is impossible, sorry. We can now represent illegal waypoints. For example, it could be at north five and south 10, which makes no sense. Um, whereas if we had just a coordinate of ints, any representation, any pair of ints is a valid waypoint. But I still think that this is, it makes talking about the rest of the problem nicer enough to make up for being able to represent illegal positions, I think. Um, So I think part two will be Manhattan dot um, ship foldel follow of an initial traveler. That be use one and L or two. That's one I always change my mind about. It starts at zero zero. And 
then it's waypoints we said are like what are they 10 east and one north um like so this is an int what are you upset about couldn't match ship with traveler oh follow is we need a new function um use waypoint Okay, cool. Um, and we could move follow into part one, I guess, since it is really specific to part one, as it turns out. Okay. Um, ah, indent that a bit more. There you go. Where use waypoint. Now we have some stuff to do, right? Um, it's a function from traveler to instruction to traveler. Of traveler. Um, pause. Waypoint, I guess. Maybe we'll need to break it down more, but equals something. Um, oh, and instruction TN. You know, I guess I could have done this NDiv 90 elsewhere. That's kind of nice, isn't it? I can do it here. Yeah, let's do that. Um, let's call it scaled. Let's call these raw, maybe. Oh, you know what? I can make this simpler. Is I can say uh, I can just make this raw of n. Um, where and now we can do some stuff. Uh, actually, most of this doesn't need to be. Yeah, so we can say. Um, oh, whoops! And the whole point of this was that I can delete these now. Where exactly do I need to scope raw? Like raw of d uh, equals some um, absolute c and amount. Um, amount equals read n. Something's not right. No, it's right. No, 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 I just need it to be D actually. Like so. Um, and scaled C equals I want to go there. Oh, these are indented wrong. That's why. Uh, 
I guess this needs a where to be specific. There we go. Instruction relative C of amount div by 90. Why you know parse? Oh, because I haven't fixed this. Actually, this could be actually dividing this by 90 is wrong. The program is broken now. Very funny. Hmm. Well, we'll make this one special, I guess. Instruction of relative. If I were, if I understood at the beginning how I was moving the ship, I probably would have put F together with north, south, D. No, because those aren't compass directions. I don't know. Um, relative F and just amount, I think. Yeah. What? Instructions applied to too few arguments. Thank you, yes. Okay. Oh, C is duplicated, huh? Um, D then? So, I don't know. Was this a useful refactoring? Um, what's wrong? Oh, I removed it. <laughs> I didn't type the D back in. Was this a useful refactoring? Like, I don't know, not exactly. It helps a little bit um, in that this dividing by 90 is now shared between part one and part two, um, rather than being buried in um, this weird place. And I think that this was the right way to parse things to begin with, and I just didn't think of it. Oh no, it was because I didn't realize I was going to need to scale by anything. When I didn't need to scale by anything, it was kind of like, fine, we'll just parse the direction and the number separately. But now that they're related to each other, anyway. Uh, so now we have to actually implement use waypoint, right? Um, and use waypoint, It's kind of annoying that like compass, like the absolute and the relative movements are like they should. They have some things that in common and some things that are different. It's like not really the right way to have split the domain up somehow. Because in the case of part two, north, south, east, west. And left and right are all ways to move the waypoint, and forward is a way to move the ship. Whereas in part one, north, south, east, west, and forward were all ways to move the ship, and left and right were ways to move the heading. So like, I don't know, the splitting is weird. But I don't think there was a really clean way to split that makes sense for both of them. Short of like defining completely different types for the two, which sounds just unbearable. So I think we just say case T of. Um, and T... Yes, T is a heading, I guess. It's either absolute or relative. Absolute um, C relative F is still special and relative R is still not special. So in some sense, like this was kind of a good way to split things up, I guess. Both of them care about C and R differently. Hmm. Maybe we could have like we could have had like a an, a compass direction, a turn, and forward be its own special case. 
if I'd thought of that, maybe I would have done it. But as it is, it's not too bad to have them be separate. Um, in the case of absolute C, it's fairly simple, right? Traveler of... Do I have add in here somewhere? I have move, okay. Traveler of move pause by... Um, no. We leave the position alone. Ah, the problem is that our move... Yeah. Our move takes a compass direction and assumes that's how you want to move. We don't have a compass direction. We have two compass directions. I guess we could just use them both, right? That's not too bad. Um, oh no, we only have one. Because we're not moving to the waypoint. We're moving the waypoint itself by north, south, east, or west. Okay. Um, so move, move of N and Uh, the direction is C by the waypoint. Yes. Oh, but the problem is that I said I wanted the waypoint represented as like north 10, east 5 instead of as like 10, 5. Or 510, I guess. I see. And now it's sort of awkward to apply movements to the waypoint. Turning is easier, but movements are harder. Oh, all right. I'll just make them both compass positions, I think. Right? What else could I do instead? Because it's how awkward is this really going to make moving, <coughs> turning the waypoint? It's not that bad. All right, let's undo making coordinates be param parametric. Okay, so now I think this has become correct. And nothing else has broken yet. Because we haven't, oh, part two is wrong. Um, our new position is actually um, x, y, 10, 1. Okay. What's the warning here? Oh, defined but not used, sure. So, this is fairly easy, I think. Um, we're just going to say it's traveler of, we're changing our position. This is the only time this happens. Pause prime, leave the waypoint alone, where um, pause prime equals Add pause to times n waypoint. Um, add of x, y, dx, dy. Actually, like, why am I making this all functiony? There's not really any need to. I'm going to use this once, right? Yeah. Um, we can just say uh, it's equal to, well, because we want to destructure the position here, right? I don't know, it's kind of fine. This is a, a convenient place to destructure the position. Equals x plus dx times 
n. No, we already have our dx. Y plus dy and times of n x y is just n times x n times y. Ah. I don't need times though. I kind of do, right? I guess what I just need is like let pause prime let let this equal pause in Oh, do I need dx and dy? No. In like um Do I need the structure of the waypoint though? I do. Dx dy equal waypoint in this, right? Okay, it's a little gross, but it's not the end of the world. Um, so what's the right way to do a rotation exactly? Actually, it might be super fucking easy and I was just crazy to try to represent it as a pair. Is that correct? You just take your x and make it your negative y. And you take your y and you make it your positive x. Yeah, it's so easy. OK. Um, so now we need traveler of position and waypoint prime where waypoint prime equals let x, y equal pause equal waypoint, I'm sorry, in uh, take your y and make it your positive x and your x and make it your, uh, if I write minus x, what happens here? Unary operators are really weird in Haskell. There are, ve they, there are very few of them. Oh, that's, um, hmm. That's, uh, that's just for turning right. Um, how exactly do we handle lefts? Well, we could do it separately as a, as a different thing. Um, just rewrite, rewrite the same three lines, or we could find some way to express lefts in terms of rights. Like so, perhaps, yes. Um, turn right, let's say. And let's put this here to be shared by both parts of this guard. Uh, relative L is traveler pause. like so. Obviously, you could just write it separately, but I like it this way. So does stack run, like, what, what does stack run have to say about this? 
Did I even finish writing part two? I don't know. I got a number back. I might as well put it in and see what happens, right? It's not the right answer. It's too low. Okay, fair enough. Um, so what? Um, around the tip clockwise, 90 degrees. So I think that's right. So instead of where it was, um, it was 10 east and 4 north. So we rotated it clockwise, and it's 10 south and 4 east. That matches up with what I thought. Okay. So let's see if there's something I just forgot to finish writing here. The Manhattan ship, fold L, use waypoint, starting here at east 10, north 1. Ah, uh, here's a funny thing. It actually doesn't even matter. Oh, it does matter. I was going to say it doesn't... It doesn't matter if we got the directions correct because it's all relative, but that's not true. There's absolute movements for the waypoint. Our coordinate system is arbitrary, but we have to be consistent about it in how we specify the initial waypoint. Hmm. Well, first of all, do we still get the right answer for part one? <laughs> Uh, we do, okay. Let's make sure I wrote turn right correctly. Um, turn right of, I don't know, five minus 10, and then I'll think about what those mean. Oh, it's hidden. All right, uh, but like that's east and east five, south ten in my coordinate system, which should be if you were to turn right. Um, it should be west five and north ten, and that would be. I think that's right, but I'm not sure actually. This is like, it's obvious, but let's just, uh, come on, let me use the type. Oh my God. Turn right, mushroom, cord. So minus 10 X is west 10 and minus five in the Y direction. Wait a minute, did I have this wrong? Maybe that's what's wrong. If you turn right, five minus 10, let's write down what that is, um, is five east and 10 negative in the south direction. Yes, okay. And so minus 10 minus, minus five is in our coordinate system. X negative is west, five, 10 west, I'm sorry. And minus five is south five. Right? That doesn't look like turning right, does it? Let's replace one of them with zero so it's easier for me to visualize and... No, because then you can't... Okay. So if you're going 10 south... Yeah, you know, this, this looks right, actually. If you're going mostly south but a little east and you turned right, you'd be going mostly west and a little south. That seems fine. So I don't think turn right is the problem. I wrote, uh, I just completely ignored the N in my position. Right, I was, I, I moved stuff out of a function, 
was the plan of putting the multiplication back in, but I forgot to actually do it. This is where having the functions would have been helpful, by the way, because it's obvious that you forgot a, a parameter. Oh, that's pretty far. Now it's too high. Why? Did I understand the problem correctly? F is the interesting one, of course. Number of times equal to the given value. To the waypoint 10 times. Seems right. OK, well, we can test this. No, let's put the arriving show on this bad boy. We can give this a real, really simple input, and I'm sure it'll be wrong somehow. Um, so what if I said um, part mm, use waypoint of where's the type of that? Oh, it's right here, of course. Of Traveler zero zero and ten one, and then gave it the instruction to uh, uh, relative f. We'll just test each of them, right? F uh, two. Use waypoint is hidden. That's true. All right. You know what? Forget that. We're we're moving it out. There you go. How do you like them apples, Haskell? And it says we're now at twenty-two with a waypoint of ten one. This looks right. So relative f is working. Um, and what if we said absolute n two? That looks right. We left x alone and we made y go up. Likewise, east leaves y alone and makes x go up. So these all look right, right? We that's that's since one of them is right, they're probably all right because they're based on the same move, which works in part one. So it must be that our turning is wrong, which is not a surprise. That's the interesting part. Um, relative r of 1. Remember, we already divided by 90. And the waypoint is now at 1 east, 10 south. That looks right, too. Okay, maybe I didn't. Where the navigation? Okay, so it's asking for the ship's Manhattan distance from its starting position, not the waypoints. That was one thing I thought I might be wrong about, but I think they're pretty clear. The distance between where the ship goes and where the ship started is what we're looking for. Okay, well let's parse um, the example input they gave us, right? Let's just try this and see if we get that right. Um, part one, oops, part one of this, no, this, ugh, um, there you go. When you paste, um, it doesn't matter, just stupid stuff about how I'm managing my windows. and how GHCI works in Emacs, which is like not amazingly, but tolerably. If I do this, ah, of course it wants part one, prepare. It says 25. That's the correct answer. See, 25. 
So it's a little upsetting. Is there anything not exercised in here? We have a couple forwards. We have a right turn. Hang on. Yeah, N3, right. We have one N, one, a north, a couple forwards, and a right. Our left might be wrong, actually. We didn't test left, did we? To turn left from mostly east and a little north, you get a little west, but mostly north. That looks right. It kind of has to be because we know how turning right works. Turning right is work. I mean, Am I wrong on any of these turn rights? Like, turn right is like minus five, minus, minus 10. Like it seems right, yeah? Like you're, well, let's, let's make it minus one to make me, uh, if you were, if you were going a little bit west, but mostly south and you turned right, a little west, but mostly south. You would have a little south, but mostly west. Wait a minute. That doesn't look like what I see here. Oh, right, a little east, not a little west. Yeah, yeah, so if you're going, going mostly south and a little west and you turn right, Mostly south and a little west. Directions are complicated, guys. This is that's what this represents. Mostly south, little west. If you turn right, you'd be going mostly west and a little north. Yes, that's what we see here. This is mostly west and a little north. So I think our turning is fine. And our starting position is fine. And our ability to follow the waypoint is fine. So like everything is correct. What's what's wrong here? X, Y, what is there anything not being tested by the input that they give us? Sure. South, east, west, and left. Hmm. Okay, well, I mean, one thing we can do is debug it by using um, like we, we could debug it uh, on on the original input. Um, What's wrong with this? Scan all is applied to too many arguments. Oh yeah, sure. I didn't remove the, the first instruction we were using. And so it'll give us a list of where we visited. We started at zero, zero. Then we went, we followed it a bunch of times. I mean, I don't know, obviously this is correct, so we won't see anything weird happen. Um, Then we moved the waypoint north by three um, here, this four. Then we went forward seven times, adding Seventy to a hundred, 
and 28 to 10, yielding 170, 38. So this is all fine. Now what if I said, give me an L7 in here, oops, um, an L90 here. So that's all correct up to here. And then when we decided to turn left, the waypoint went from being east 10, 4 north to being at, if I turn left, so is it 4 west, 10 north, that looks right. And then finally we did 11 forwards which should subtract 44 from our x position. And it did. And add 77 to our y position. Hang on. Our waypoint is 10. Yeah, subtracted 44, we're adding 110. Yeah, I got confused and put a seven in there somewhere. And that works. So like, what's the deal? Use waypoint looks like it's correct. Is my ship function wrong? Am I stupid? Ship and waypoint are coordinates. Well, okay, I mean, like, let's... I guess one thing I did, like, sort of wrong is... Um, I called part... Wait a minute, I called part one. What if I called part two on this? Do I get the right answer? Yeah, I do. I don't know if I already did this. Um, is it possible my Manhattan distance is wrong? That would be pretty embarrassing, wouldn't it? Um, what am I even looking at? Uh, what I want to do is run like... Let's just remove the Manhattan and ship thing and see like what we wound up with. Like, it kind of has to be correct, but like, what if it wasn't, right? So there's our ship. And when you add the stuff together, like you get something that looks like about 34 some, 54 something thousand, right? Which I think is what I guessed before, although now it's a little hard to find. Fifty-four six twenty-five. Fifty-four six twenty-five. Yeah, that's that's the correct Manhattan distance. So we found the wrong position for the ship. Why? Is there something I don't understand about the input? Like all the L's and R's seem to be divisible by 90 and they're not like, get, what? Oh, I was hitting like Windows V instead of Meta V and it was like popping up some crazy Windows program for like remembering multiple pastes at the same time. I mean, yeah, these all look fine. I didn't like accidentally delete one of these or something, did I? File is not under input control, a version control? That's a little surprising. Oh yeah, I I put input.txt in my um in my git ignore on purpose, no? Really? Why do you think it's not under version control then? I 
I don't know. Uh, now it agrees. Okay. So I've only made one edit to this. So it's not like I messed it up. Um, we could refetch the input, I suppose, but I mean, it's still giving me the right answer for part one, so I don't think that's the problem. <laughs> The problem is clearly just in this one function, but how can it be? We've tested all of the interesting stuff and it's always right. Create a new traveler and we give it an, the old position. Have I misunderstood? No, because it works for the test input. Oh, this is kind of funny. We uh, actually could write it like that if we wanted to. I think that's definitely a less helpful way to view things as a series of functions being applied to waypoint where the last function is, oh, by the way, wrap it up in traveler pause. I think it's much nicer to explore the symmetry here. Um, I guess you could do the same to both of them, right? But yuck. I didn't break anything in my parser, which is not at all surprising because part one still works. It'd be a big surprise if you changed this and part one worked. Um, we're looking at our old position position that is currently here and the waypoint that's here multiplying by n hmm And we're still supposed to treat the turns the same way, right? Divide them by 90 and so on. Right 90 rotates the waypoint around the ship clockwise 90 degrees. So I guess we can test. I mean, I don't know. We've already tested this entire input, but we'll just confirm that turn right by one starting uh, Um, what did I turn? Turn right. Turn right of the place where the waypoint previously was is um, 10 east and 4 north, which in our coordinate system is 10, 10 4, x, y. And we get four minus 10, which is four east and 10 south, which is what we're supposed to get, as it says here. I'm, I'm kind of stuck on this one. I don't really know what to even look for anymore. So I'm gonna like, I guess, cut the recording here and think about it some more off camera and hopefully get back to you. Okay, so I finally figured out what was wrong. I mean, I haven't I haven't tested it yet, but it's, it's very clearly wrong. So I, I feel okay telling you guys. Um, I ended up having to like do it, create for myself an input that I thought would kind of test things exhaustively um, and then work through it by hand comparing with what the computer gave me. 
And the sad news about this is that I did not figure it out until the very last instruction because it was giving me the right input for everything up until you finally said to turn right by 270. I assume you guys, some someone out there was shouting at the screen when I got this wrong because it is in some sense like sort of obvious. Um, I was I was concerned that I had gotten like the difference between left and right mixed up somehow um, because I had re-implemented that, uh, which which was the problem kind of. Um, the issue is here when I said to turn right by two hundred and seventy in my test input that I made up, it actually turned right only by ninety. So instead of doing a left turn, it did a right turn. And then I, of course, realized exactly what was wrong. Well, let's leave that there in case I need it. Which is that in part one, I had this, to turn right, you iterate turning right, or a, you iterate turning a direction. Um, in part two, I said, ah, of course, to turn right, you just turn right. But I forgot um, that we have this n here that was not used in this one case, right? Um, the absolute c and relative f are both correctly using n, but the relative r and relative l cases never use n. So you ignore the number after an r or an l in this implementation. Um, and I, I don't think this is the kind of thing that Haskell really should have warned me about. This is like my own fault. Um, because it totally makes sense to have, like, you pattern match on something and then you only use it in some of the cases. How could it know that I wanted to use it, right? Um, so what is the right way to do it? Um, let's say, uh, where right is turn right of waypoint, because we have waypoint and scope already. Um, and we'll do this. Um, uh, uh, I want to do this thing about iterating and doing it n times. Yeah, let's do it like this, I guess. Right n is uh, iterate, oh, actually, iterate turn right of waypoint getting n. Uh, we can say right, right n times, and then, like this is kind of dumb, but we can say right three times n. That's a two. Oh, you're upset about the shadowing. Uh, okay, we'll call it M, fair enough, and we'll just say 1 and 3 here, and then we'll say N times M. It's like kind of dumb, we're doing unnecessary extra work, um, but I, I can live with that. Oh right! I opened up a closure REPL to do a little multiplication while I was uh, <laughs> uh, while I was doing my manual testing. It's a large number, but a different large number. That's great news. Let's see how that works. That's the right answer. All right. Ugh. Let's get rid of all this junk about testing now. Nobody needs tests once your program works, right? That's how that's how software works. Um, I mean, we could we could move turn right into here, I guess. Oops, I deleted the wrong part of the definition. Yeah, that seems all right. Okay, uh, I think that's everything I wanted to clean up. We didn't end up using applicative do, actually, did we? Okay. Uh, 
And the rest of this is all part two stuff, right? Yeah. Well, actually, we could make the parsing. Eh. No, I think it's it's reasonable to make the change to parsing be part of the part two change rather than trying to separate this bit out. Because it, it, it wasn't until part two arrived that I knew I wanted to parse things differently. Well, is that true? No, really this should be part of part one, but okay, whatever. <laughs> um, day 12, part two. I don't know how far back in time we have to go. Five should be plenty. Oh, actually it just has to go there. Just, just like, Three would have been enough. Uh, yeah, seems fine. Okay, finally, that's all for today. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.